Hello and welcome. Today's video is a part of a collaboration started by Laura from What Laura Likes on Dr. Carrie Gress's book, The Anti-Mary Exposed, Rescuing the Culture from Toxic Femininity. I loved this book. I listened to it on Audible a long time ago, I think maybe six months to a year ago or something, and it was great to revisit this book for this collaboration. And we're all focusing on just one chapter, even though feminism, femininity is such a huge loaded topic, it's so hard not to just go off on a rant about other parts of feminism, you know, I think everyone is for first wave feminism. You'll be watching this after I voted in the primaries and researched all of the candidates. Um, that was, you know, today for me, yesterday for you. But in this book, Dr. Carrie Gress really exposes the brokenness of the second wave feminists and how such a small group of broken women influenced our entire culture. And, you know, there are so many different types of feminists. There are pro-life feminists. Anyway, make sure to check out all of the women in the playlist below. Some of them are covering some of the earlier chapters that cover a bit more of toxic femininity. I am going to cover chapter 10, which is the beginning of part four, the end of the book about modern women and Mary. So the title of chapter 10 is Imitating Mary, and Dr. Carrie Gress starts off the chapter reminding us about how a lot of modern women are not interested in imitating Mary and are not interested in the church. Teenagers, for example, are often interested in whatever their peers are interested in and Teen Vogue and TV shows and social media and that's the reason why I'm all about Catholic social media. We can't let the culture dominate social media and influence all of these young minds. There needs to be a Catholic presence on social media, on TV, everywhere. And in the book, she talks about this absence of faith that she sees in women. And I see it all the time. Women will stray completely from the church and, you know, they want to get married in the church just so they have a beautiful wedding in a beautiful place, uh, but they don't have that connection to what is really happening at church, or they might come back to church to baptize their child, but they are not educated and aware of what miraculous thing it is to baptize your child. It just sort of feels like the right thing for them to do, or some women are even going to mass, but, they're not connected to what is happening in the mass. Jesus is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, and we get to be in complete communion with him. But some women are sitting in the pews and their minds just racing with to-do lists, and there's just an absence of faith and a restlessness. And I see this all the time, you know, I sing for weddings and those brides I've never seen go back to mass. I'm not judging these women, but it just makes me so sad that they are missing out on the joy of Jesus. That stirring of love and intimacy with God. Earlier in the book, Dr. Carrie Gress covers how what women do, it comes from a motivation of fulfilling their desires. But we Catholics know that only God can fulfill our desires. And the best way to come to God, to come to intimacy with God, is to imitate Mary. We are all called to imitate Mary and to be at the foot of the cross, just as Mary was at the foot of the cross. And so many women say that they don't feel a connection to Mary, and this totally applied to me as well. I talk about that more in some of my other videos. I'll link my playlist about Mary below. In order for us to imitate Mary and to understand Mary, a practical way to do that 
is to study the virtues of Mary. And a lot of the Catholic women on YouTube already did a beautiful collaboration about the virtues of Mary. So I will link that below, definitely check that out. And the author explained that when she became a mother and she had her first child, she really understood Mary more. She understood what it was to love so deeply, to love your child so much that you want to suffer with your child just so you can take some of that suffering, that burden away from your child and to be so generous to give to your child until you literally can't give anymore. But she said in hindsight, she actually was learning about the virtues of Mary even when she wasn't aware that she was. Our society, for example, tells us that being outspoken, ambitious, independent, and assertive will bring us happiness. And the author discovered that those things didn't bring her happiness. And she is very ambitious. She's written many books. She's an intellectual woman. You can Google her. But in this book, she reflects on her interior capacities kindness, compassion, anticipating the needs of others, goodness, sincerity, and how these capacities brought her such happiness and all of her relationships improved. Her relationships with her friends, with her husband, with her child, when she focused on these abilities of her own and moving away from selfishness and moving towards the needs of others, happiness, grew within her. She also talks about how Mary is always with us, always our mother, and we are called to have an intimate relationship with her. And also how powerful the rosary is. If you are new to the rosary, it's a beautiful prayer. It's a meditation on the life of Christ, Mary's son. I did a whole video on how I pray the rosary. I'll link that below. And Dr. Carrie Gress talks about uh, different demons who have been recorded by exorcists who have said that how powerful the rosary is. If everyone prayed the rosary with faith, we could destroy demons. Another point that Dr. Carrie Gress talked about in this chapter that I really loved is if you knew a mother who lost her child because of the sin of someone else, if she was angry and pointing her finger, that anger would be justified and we would sympathize with that mother. But Mary had to suffer through her son's death because of our sin and she does not point the finger at us. She loves us with a mother's love. She comes to us with compassion, protection, wisdom, and guidance. And all she wants to do is bring us to her son, Jesus Christ. She's a model of mercy, and that mercy is something that we should imitate. Okay, so that's pretty much chapter 10, but if you take anything away from this video, Please listen to the other women in this collaboration. The playlist is linked below. And please just go listen or read this book, The Anti-Mary Exposed, Rescuing the Culture of Toxic Femininity. Dr. Carrie Gress researched for this book, I believe for two years. So you can listen to two years of research in you know less than a day and it is just an amazing book and I was even hesitant to be a part of this collaboration because I don't want anyone to watch my video and not read the book, but I think this is a good way to spread the word about her book and get more people to read or listen to her book. Such a good book. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. I don't understand the whole YouTube algorithm, but I know when you subscribe, it helps other people to find my videos and I really appreciate it. I mean, the whole point of this is to get people to return back to God, especially this Lent, return back to Jesus and his church and I truly appreciate you. I'm going to get a giveaway together soon. I'm really excited for that. Thank you to Laura from What Laura Likes for starting this collaboration and Dr. Carrie Gress for writing an amazing book. I hope you all are having a beautiful and blessed Lent. God bless you.
Bye.